welcome back to my channel. My name is Vanessa and this is my channel, The Plantiness. Um, if you have never been before, we talk about all different sorts of plant related things here. So if that sounds like something that you would be interested in, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below as that really helps me out. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about Hoya care tips or a Hoya care guide, whatever you want to call it. To start off, I thought that we could do a quick background or information on Hoyas as that is just a little bit of interesting goodness. So the first Hoya was described in 1810 and according to the Swedish Hoya Society, there are 750 published species of Hoyas. So it's likely that multiples of these are the same Hoya and they've just been published by a different person so it's really hard to determine exactly how many Hoyas there are out there. There are likely hundreds more that still haven't been discovered as Hoyas are epiphytic so they like to grow up trees and along the limbs so botanists aren't able to discover these Hoyas until the trees fall down or something knocks them off the trees and onto the ground. So that's really exciting because that means that there's like hundreds of more cool Hoyas out there that we don't even know about yet. So Hoyas, like most of our other indoor houseplants, are from tropical and subtropical areas of the world. So mainly Southeast Asia are where Hoyas are found. So these are countries such as Malaysia, the Philippines, uh, Indonesia, China, and there's even some native here in Australia. So I think that that's so cool that we have Hoyas out here in the wild here in Australia. Hoyas are probably my favorite genus of plant alongside philodendrons. They're probably uh, in a tie, I would say. And one of the reasons for that is that they're such easy care plants. They don't really require much. And as you'll see throughout the video, I think they're an excellent beginner plant, especially if you have a tendency to forget about your plants. So let's get into the care tips. The topic that I'm gonna cover first, and I think that this is the most important topic when it comes to caring for your Hoyas, is soil mixture. I think soil mixture is the most important thing when it comes to caring for your Hoyas, as if you get this right, it's pretty much easy to get the other things right. Hoyas are epiphytic, so this means that they want a really airy mixture. My typical mixture is mostly orchid bark, then perlite, horticultural charcoal, and then a little bit of potting mix. I tend to lean more on the less potting mix than more potting mix, but it's really up to you and how often you think you're gonna water. So that brings us to the next topic is watering. Watering your Hoyas is so easy. So in the summer, I like to wait until my soil is 90% dry and in the winter, 100% dry, or alternatively, I will wait until they show signs of dehydration in winter just because they're so susceptible to root rot and I just wanna make sure that my plant really needs that water and isn't just gonna be sitting in it for weeks and weeks on end. So a good way to know when your plant is dehydrated is the leaves will become more flexible. In some cases, such as the Hoya compactor, the leaves will start to pucker and wrinkle. So that's a really good indication. But if you're using that as a method, please make sure that the soil is bone dry as well, as this could also mean signs of root rot. So if you use the two in conjunction, that's probably the best method to watering your Hoyas and it's what works best for me as I don't think I've ever had root rot on any of my plants. So fingers crossed that I don't after saying that, but it's what's worked for me so far. So when you are watering your Hoyas, it's important to water them thoroughly because you're waiting for your plant to become dehydrated. It's so important for the root health to make sure that they're all getting moistened evenly and they're able to draw that water back up efficiently into the rest of the plant to plumb it back up. So if you're scared of overwatering or you think that you are an overwaterer, when it comes to Hoyas, I think it is probably best for you to use terracotta pots. Most of my Hoyas are in terracotta pots, mainly because I like the way that they look, but also I just want to do everything possible to ensure that my plants aren't getting root rot. The terracotta, or you can also use ceramic or another material that wicks away the moisture and it does help increase uh, the roots to breathe so that's another plus for your plants so the next topic to move on to is lighting lighting i think is also really important for hoyas some can tolerate lower light like we know with most of our plants they can tolerate it they're not going to thrive 
And honestly, you want your Hoyas to thrive, right? In my experience, bright, indirect light is what's best for them. They can handle direct light and you know they can probably handle a little bit less light but it's up to you and how well you want your Hoyas to do really. My Hoyas currently are mainly sitting in front of a north facing window where they get bright indirect light from morning till probably just after midday and they seem to really be enjoying it and they're always pushing out new growth. Another section of my Hoya collection are actually hanging in a southwest facing window which if you live in Australia you'll know that that doesn't sound like a lot of light but the house next door to me reflects the light back so it is pretty bright ambient light and then in the afternoon they get that direct sunlight so they really enjoy that and they also are pushing out heaps of new growth which is really good and those ones that are getting the direct light are seeing signs of sun stress which I love on Hoyas, so that just really is a plus for me. So the next topic is troubleshooting slash miscellaneous. So the first thing that I wanna cover is just general key indicators of certain things. So Hoyas with thicker leaves, such as the Hoya obovata, can tolerate a lot less water than say the Hoya polyneura, who has thinner leaves and likes a bit more moisture. Then we have Hoyas that have a bit of fuzz on them or are slightly pubescent such as the Hoya globulosa or the linearis, as compared to, say, we'll just use the Hoya obovata as an example again, that has no pubescent. So the ones that are pubescent, they do really enjoy a higher humidity. These things on like looking at your Hoyas are really good indication as to what environment and watering condition you could give your Hoyas. And because there's so many different types of Hoyas, there might not be good care tips online or just really basic ones. So these are really good like indicators that you would know what environment to be giving your Hoyas. Um, another thing that I wanted to touch on was fertilizing. Because we know that Hoyas are epiphytic, they really aren't getting a lot of nutrients. So we have to convert this into our way that we care for our Hoyas. So I like to only fertilize during the active growing season. So spring and summer and early autumn when it's still a little bit warm and they're growing a lot. Ideally, I use like a quarter strength of the recommended mix just because I would rather under fertilize than over fertilize because the Hoyas have such a delicate root ball that you don't want to burn those with excessive amounts of fertilizer. Like if they need more fertilizer, you can always give it to them. Whereas if they're getting too much, it's really hard to get rid of that. Um, pests. So the only pests that I have experienced on my Hoyas are mealybugs. And in my opinion, they're probably the easiest pests to get rid of. I have also, not that I have like a big amount of experience with pests, I've only ever had mealybugs and spider mites, but out of the two, the mealybugs were easy to get rid of. I can do a getting rid of mealybugs on Hoyas video if you guys would be interested. So let me know down below if that sounds like something that you would want to watch. And I can definitely do that in the future, but Really, mealybugs are pretty easy to get rid of and I don't think that they're anything to be stressed about. Just keep an eye on your plants and if you find some, deal with it quickly and you'll be fine and there won't be an issue. Next up is yellowing leaves. Yellowing leaves could be an indication of three things. So overwatering, underwatering and root rot. So overwatering. A good way of combating this is to make sure that if your plant is showing signs of dehydration or the leaves are becoming soft, that your soil is bone dry. If you're doing this, then most likely it's not root rot that's causing your yellowing leaves. So next up is underwatering. I think the good way to combat underwatering is just keeping an eye on your plant. When it does show those signs of dehydration and the soil is bone dry, just water it straight away. Don't wait. Don't think, oh, I'll water it in a few more days. Just water it straight away so that that plant isn't getting too stressed out. And the last for yellowing leaves is pests. So make sure that you're always checking your plants for pests, like whenever you water it or whenever you walk past it. I think it's important with all house plants that you're just keeping a really close eye on them, that you're not getting pests. And because we all know if one plant gets a pest, the likelihood of it getting out of control is there. And that just is when it gets too stressful. So just keep a close eye on all of your plants 
and you should be fine. Honestly, pests can be dealt with. It's not a big deal. It's nothing to freak out over. So the last one that I'm going to cover is pot size. Pot size, just make sure that the pot fits the root ball in it nicely. You don't want to have a pot that is like two, three sizes too big for the root ball. You just want like one side up when you're repotting with Hoyas, honestly. The root ball just needs to be like they roots grow so slowly and you probably won't need to repot for another one to two years anyway the roots are so delicate and so small that you don't want them to become too wet by using a too big of a pot they're not going to use all the moisture in that soil so just the smaller the pot size that you can use the better honestly that's just like a really good tip for when it comes to pot sizing and for your hoyas so that's it for today guys uh if there was anything that you think that i missed or you had any additional care tips please feel free to leave it down in the comments below as they might help myself or someone else out we could have like a little hoya care tips going on down below in the comments also just know that my care tips are not gospel everyone's environment where you live in the world your house the weather they all change the care tips for your plants they change the watering schedule, everything like that. So make sure that when you're using these, just use them as a general guide. Take everything with a grain of salt. You may need to tweak them to work best for you. And that's perfectly fine because that's how we all learn and we get to know our plants better. If you guys wanted to see any more videos on Hoyas, please let me know down below as I would love to talk more about Hoyas. They're my favorite genus of plants so I could talk about them for days. Just let me know down below and I would love to do that. And if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you hit the like button down below as it really helps me out. And I'll see you next Saturday. Bye!